Hi guys, welcome to Peepa for Kingdom. This is your mid-month video. And this week should be quite a fun one. We're doing the top five possible Peepa for tank mates. So possible, meaning that I keep them species only, at the moment at least. And they're possible because Peepa can attack fish. Depends on personality, size of your tank, etc. So we're going to be looking at the possible top five P Puffer tank mates. So something to remember just before we go through the top five is how big your tank is. Do you have a particularly aggressive P Puffer already? In which case it's probably best not to put any new fish in there. Or take out the aggressive P Puffer, take them back to the store so you've got more communal uh, vibe in your tank. And also be thinking realistically, what can you put in your tank? If you've got a 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 gallon, etc. tank, that's going to affect what you can get, how many of these fish you can get, and what's going to work in your tank. So be realistic about it. Don't just think, oh, I want loads of fish to go with these. It'd be cool to look at X amount of different species in with these pea puffers. For me, I think you're going to get the most out of your pea puffers by keeping the species only. But as this is something that comes up so often on forums and things like that, I thought it was a bit silly not to address this. So there's obviously people who want to get different fish and they're going to get them, um, you know, regardless of advice and whatnot. So I thought it's best to do a video to help people who want to have uh, different types of fish with peepuff is what would be the best and most suited to go with them. Because realistically as well, they're not all aggressive. They might have a bad reputation, but it's quite obvious if you go on different forums and stuff, there's lots of people keeping certain species that work really well within certain types of tanks and layouts of tanks too. So without further ado, here is the top five possible pea puffer tank mates. So at number five is the Otto Sinkless. These guys are really interesting fish to have in your tank. They're pretty active. You need to have lots of plants for them to munch on and rest on as well from the algae that'll be growing on them. You want a tank that's got quite a bit of algae in there because without it, they will die. A lot of people think they only eat algae though, so you do need to feed them vegetables as well. So you need to make sure that you're feeding them just as much as you feed other fish. So vegetables like um, courgette, cucumber, I believe zucchini as well they like. But that's something you can research more into. So you do have to make sure that you're not just relying on them to eat algae in a tank. They do need uh, quite a lot of food and a lot to keep them going. So I don't think algae is the only thing that will keep them sustained. Now these guys grow to only about two inches long. So they're perfect if you've got, say, 20 gallon, 30 gallon plus tank. Uh, they need to be in groups, so you want to have them four minimum, but ideally you'd have at least six, I suppose. They're fantastic little group fish, really good to have around the tank. Not to get confused with the Siamese algae eater, which grow bigger, and they will end up sucking on the slime coats of fish. So do not get the Siamese algae eater, which can be mistaken for these Otosynclus. Otosynclus also need a mature tank, so you want one that's been up and running for about six months. Uh, so that they, they have a stable environment to go into. They're very, very fragile and they're susceptible to water changes. So you need to have a very um, easygoing tank that's stable for them to go straight into. Then you need soft water as well. As I mentioned, you need to feed them well as if it was any other fish. Don't think that they can just have algae and then once that's run out, they'll be fine. They do need to be looked after properly. Uh, mushrooms is something else they can eat as well. And that is number five, Otto Sinkless. Now just to remind you as well, these guys are fragile because the way they're caught, they use, um, I think it's poisons of some sort that bring them up to the top of the water. So they also can often come to fish stores with parasites. So people do have a lot of success with them, but they do have a lot of fatality rates as well. So that's why you need a really stable environment for them to go into. Otherwise you're more than likely going to buy say six and you might have a load die very soon. In at number four is the Bristle Nose Pleco. Now these guys, whilst looking a bit ugly, they're actually fascinating little creatures and they're a really good addition to a tank. One of the main things you need to know is that these are huge waste producers. So you need to have a good filter, otherwise you're likely gonna have to be using a fish net to clean out their poo almost every day, every other day. They're huge waste producers, which is why I actually got rid of my clown pleco. But if you're willing to do that and keep that to maintain the tank, these are really great fish to have. You ideally want these in about a 20 gallon plus. The bristle nose pleco can grow between five and down to three inches. I think five would probably be really at the maximum end. They're probably more likely to grow to three or four in captivity. So these guys are really 
nice, interesting little species to have. You can see from the picture there, little sucker mouths, you'll get them on the glass as well. And they're quite curious creatures to watch. These guys need a good filter, as I said, because when, the, when these guys are producing so much waste, you do need a lot of movement around the tank from the flow, and that'll keep it nice and clear for the other fish as well, because the pea puffers are quite sensitive as well to water conditions, so you really do need to be on top of that if you're going to have one of these with pea puffers, because pea puffers, obviously being small, are susceptible to water conditions. Now these pictures, I'm pretty much showing these ones now just because I love them. Thank you so much to everyone that has uh, taken pictures of their fish for this top five. Really appreciate it. Everyone has been so helpful and lots of great looking pictures here. As I said, uh, the one that I had was a clown pleco and those ones grow to about three to four inches. They're also good to go with pea puffers. That's one I actually had with my pea puffers. Um, so you need bog wood for these as well or types of wood that they can kind of graze on as well for a long time. This is actually one of my favourite pictures, just poking out of the cave, kind of like, hello, hello, Tiro. It's a free little voice over there for you. This guide's hanging out on top of the cave on the bogwood. So as you can see, they love hanging out in all sorts of little nooks and crannies. Good little picture there, eating, I presume that's a zucchini, maybe a cucumber. And you can really see the bristles on this picture. They're such unique looking placos, they're really good to have in the tank. And last but not least, this fish on the glass kind of looks like it's slowly flying off into the sky. And at number three, it's the Corydoras. These guys are super interesting fish. You can get them in a huge variety of colors. Uh, they're all generally the same shape. Sizes vary between sort of one inch for the pygmy corys up to about, I suppose it was about three, four inches for those as well. So these are really interesting fish to have. These are schooling fish. So similar to the Otto Sinkless, you're really going to need to get about four, five, six plus of these guys so they can be really happy together. And you'll see then the sort of natural behavior as well if you do that. As you can see, the different sort of colors you can get in these, these are the pandi, pandacoras, pandi, that's a new species, pandacorador, corridoras, which are fascinating fish as well, as you can see schooling there. This is one of my favorite pictures, actually. I cannot for life me remember what species this is, but um, I'm sure you can find all the different species names uh, online. I was going to go through all of them, but then I realized there's so many, this video would be about five hours long. But they're really interesting anyway. You can see on these, this is an albino corridora. As you can see, they've got barbels at the end of their mouth. So what you need is soft substrate, so either really fine gravel or sand, because otherwise if you've got sharp bits of gravel, they can lose their barbels, which is obviously not great for them. And that's not something you want to see. Something else to note as well is that a lot of people have success with these breeding. So if you've got a lot of plants in a tank for them to hide in and hang around in their pairs and breeding couples, that's something to notice as well. So if you've got a lot of these, be prepared for babies. And number two in the top five possible pea puffer tank mates is our mano shrimp. Now I've had these guys myself, they are fascinating little creatures, and you're probably wondering why on earth have I got these at number two? Some people might think they're a bit boring and a bit bland, but these are actually super interesting creatures to have in your tank. They're very active all the time. They're constantly zipping around the tank, and when they're not, they're grazing on the algae that's in the tank. So you wanna have a lot of plants in your tank as well for them to graze. As you can see, these guys also have eggs, but they won't actually hatch eggs in fresh water. They need brackish water to hatch eggs. So even if they do have eggs, that's, uh, that's something you won't be getting is little baby shrimp. As you can see there, they eat algae wafers as well. So they're pretty easy to look after. And I don't know if I've got the picture here or not, but there is, uh, uh, when they grow, when they get bigger, they start to shed their skin. So you'll see ghost-like sort of shells of the shrimp dot about in your tank in little nooks and crannies. It's good to have places for these to hide as well. So you may have them and often find you don't see them for a while. And all of a sudden you'll see a whole bunch. This is the skin that I was talking about. When they shed it, it looks really cool actually. So every so often you'll see one of these just in the nooks and crannies of the wood in your tank or sometimes on the floor.
So I know you're wondering and screaming at your screens, what on earth could be number one as the top potential tank mate for your pea puffer fish? It is the Cooley Loach. These guys are awesome. They're such cool fish. Like many on this list, they're really interesting. These guys are super curious, super active. They have moments where they'll lounge around a bit, but by and large, they will be exploring your whole tank every nook and cranny. Cranny? Cranny. Lots of made up words today. And these do well in groups. So you really want to get these similar to um, the Corydoras. You want to have these in groups of probably about four to six plus. The more of them you can get, the better. As I say, it depends on the size of your fish tank as well. So you want to be kind of uh, sensible about how many you're buying. But these guys are awesome additions to a tank. Really, you want to get a tank that's probably about, I would imagine, 20 gallons plus if you want to have a, a good group of these. Again, like the Corridoras, you need soft substrate, so sand or, um, you know, fine gravel, so it's not anything sharp, because they've got little barbels as well to sense food and movement, so you want to make sure that they're looked after and safe in their movement. Now, something you also have to watch out for is that these guys can often get into people's, people's filter, so make sure you've got some kind of guard over your filter to stop them from zipping up there. People will quite often find them in their filters, in canister filters, haven't seen them for ages, and then all of a sudden, they find them loitering in their filter quite happily. A lot of the time, they're still alive. These guys grow to about three to four inches. So bear that in mind when you're buying them as well. Always think about what's the adult size of these fish when you're buying them and how much uh, space you have for these once they get to adulthood. Because that's such an important thing that people often forget about. They'll see fish, think they're amazing, buy them, then find out, oh, actually, once they're adults, they probably get too big for my tank. So that's something to think about as well. So that's your number one. So guys, I hope this has been a really helpful video to you discussing the top five possible pea puffer tank mates. Now, do remember to keep all the things I said in mind. So how big your tank is, how many pea puffers you have, the personalities of the puff fish that you have to make sure that they're all going to settle in well together. And if you've got a pea puffer that kind of bullies and harasses others, it's probably not a good idea to get other fish in there. If you found this useful, please do subscribe. I do videos every two weeks. I do my four episodes, which are more about their fish tank updates themselves uh, at the beginning of every month. And I'll do an interesting one like this in the middle of the month as well. If you find this helpful, interesting, it's been really good for you and useful, please do subscribe, hit that like button and leave a comment. Also, if there's any fish that you think, I cannot believe that he didn't put that in the top five, then do add that to the comments section, let people know the kind of success people are having. Also, if there's any fish that you would say definitely don't get, like, you know, long-tailed fish, which are obvious no-nos, then put that in there as well. So I want this channel to be something that's going to be really helpful for everyone. Thank you so much for watching. As I said, I hope you find this really interesting and enjoyable. We've got plenty more videos in the future. So that is the top five possible pea puffer fish tank mates.